Hey guys, so today the mathematical thing we want to prove, the mathematical lemma if you want to say, is going to be related to a function I know not all of my audience will be associated with, the factorial function. Um, the factorial function is defined as this boy right here, where any number factorial is equal to 1 times 2 times 3 all the way up to a certain number factorial. We can think of this, for example, as 3 factorial equals 1 times 2 times 3, 7 factorial equals 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7, 1 factorial is equal to 1, just like that. Um, a basic knowledge of this function is vital for understanding what is about to be proven, so that's why I'm explaining it now instead of just leaving it in the Google Doc in the description. Now, we can use that knowledge of a factorial function to more generally define this function here. Instead of looking for any specific number, let's check what happens when we change this variable directly. Let's say you go from n factorial to n plus 1 factorial. Well, this is going to equal 1 times 2 times 3, blah 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 blah, all the way up to n. However, it's going to be multiplied by n plus 1. Which means, if we rewrite it, we can see this term is the same as this term, so we can substitute this into here, and come up with the equation. Now, how does this equation help us find out anything new? This generalization of the equation will help us determine numbers which don't seem reasonably within the bounds. To start, if you haven't already noticed or if you haven't already jumped on the um, Google Doc, we're proving that all negative integers to this function diverge. All negative factorials diverge, they're asymptotic. So, to first help with this, we're going to need to establish something very important to deriving a limit that we're going to use later on. What if we input zero? into this. It gets us 1 factorial is equal to 0 factorial times 0 plus 1. This can be simplified to 1 factorial equals 0 factorial times 1, because this term is simply just going to become 1, which will simplify to 0 factorial is equal to 1 factorial. If you remember our examples from when we were doing the preface to this, or if you've read the Google Doc, you'll remember that 1 factorial equals 1, so 0 factorial equals 1. This is the first step to proving that all negative integers are asymptotic in the factorial function. With these two facts in place, we can establish the next step of our proof, which will be that we cannot have 0 factorial be equal to 1 while having negative 1 factorial be equal to a definitive value. Let's prove this. Inputting negative 1 as n into our function, we are going to get 0 factorial is equal to negative 1 factorial times 0 because negative 1 plus 1 equals 0, which means negative 1 factorial will be equal to 0 factorial over 0. However, since we know 0 factorial equals 1, negative 1 factorial will equal 1 over 0. This is a problem. Now, to explain it to those of you who have never tried to see proofs for dividing by 0 before, let's imagine the, gro um, the graph for 1 over x. So here's our graph. We know as we make the number larger for 1 over x, it's, um, our value is going to get smaller, it's going to approach 0, y equals 0. 
However, as we increase it, the value will get higher and higher and higher and higher and higher until it touches heaven and it hits zero. So 1 over 0 is equal to infinity done. This is a really weird proof we're talking about, but uh, no, no, not yet. We can also play the same game from the negative side. So as we come in, we slowly approach that asymptote of 1 over x, which means that 1 over 0 is both positive infinity and negative infinity at the same time, which is impossible. Thus, negative 1 factorial over 1 over 0 is the equivalent to saying negative 1 factorial is undefined. Or that the limit of negative 1 factorial is divergent. Now, let's come back to the final step, proving the inductive step of the proof, or that this applies to all negative integers. Now, we could just write it in a formal proof as, assume these are all negative integers, the value of negative 1 is divergent, so everything less than that will be divergent. All other um, integers are less than that, so negative integers are less than negative 1. So, proof complete, QED. But that glosses over what this actually means. So, to go through a step-by-step -step example of how you would come up with a mental process for handling this proof, let's assume negative 1 factorial is divergent. The reason I say assume is because I'm going to prove it um, later on in the final addendum to this, um, but right now, Technically, the expansion of the factorial function doesn't necessarily prove 0 factorial equals 0. Uh, negative 0 factorial equals uh, 1. So the 0 over 0 identity could have potentially been a limit that does approach something, but we're going to prove later on that's not the case. But let's assume right now the negative 1 factorial is divergent, right? Let's check for negative 2. So this will give us negative 1 factorial is equal to negative 2 factorial times negative 1. When we're simplified, negative 2 factorial is going to be equal to negative 1 factorial over negative 1. Now, if negative 1 factorial is divergent, it doesn't matter how this happens. Negative 2 factorial is also divergent asymptotic, however you want to define it. Looking at this farther ahead, let's plug in negative 3 factorial for our value. We're going to get negative 2 factorial is equal to negative 3 factorial times negative 2, or more simplified, negative 3 factorial equals negative 2 factorial over negative 2, but we know that since this is divergent, this must be divergent. And this logic applies for all integers below negative 1. However, we have one more thing left to address. Is 0 factorial actually equal to 1? We kind of just derived this formula and then we just said it was, but we saw that that assumption led to the entirety of all negative integers in a factorial function being divergent. But it kind of just feels like we're resting on thin ice with this, so let's prove it conclusively. Using this formula, let's assume that negative, let's put n as negative 1, 0 factorial is equal to negative 1 factorial times 0, which means 0 factorial equals 0, right? Cool. Cool. However, if we put 0 into this function, we're going to get 1 
factorial is equal to 0 factorial times 1. If 0 factorial equals 0, that'll mean that 0 factorial is going to equal 0 times 1, which means 1 factorial is going to equal 0. However, we know that 1 factorial, from how we've defined it earlier, actually equals 1. And I hope you would know that 1 is not equal to 0. Meaning that the result we found that 0 factorial is equal to 1 is true. And that means that it does imply that all negative integers inside of a factorial function are asymptotic in nature or will produce undefined values. Bit formal about it. And before we transition to the end card, I would like to thank a friend of mine, Arcanian. He worked with me on establishing a lot of the formal methodology of this proof, um, which will be linked in the description, um, the formal proof that him and I made, along with me also making a separate Google Doc for just following along with the video. Thank you for watching!